Amen. Thank you, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Paul said this, I fear. Well, let's back up to verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little while in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Hmm. Did you know there is a godly jealousy? I'm jealous of you with a godly jealousy. I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus whom we've not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you've which you have not received, or another gospel which you've not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose that I was not even one whit behind the very chiefest apostles. Now, he said, I fear lest by any means the serpent, as the serpent beguiled Eve, you could be beguiled or you could be lied to and believe a lie. What was the lie that, that Paul preached against throughout the script? In fact, if you came to the Bible college, we talked about this almost nightly, didn't we? There was a lie that was taught that righteousness is given based solely on some effort of the worshiper. And that is a false gospel. It, because there's no end to what needs done. If you... If you can't get your salvation, then you haven't done enough. Or if you can't get your healing, then you haven't done enough. Or if you can't receive a blessing from God, you haven't done enough. That whatever the, the worshiper has to do is the false gospel. No. Jesus did it all. We sang the song. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but He washed it white as snow. He is Lord. He did the effort. He did the energy. He did the performance. Nothing, nobody else. He said, I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, your mind would be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. Now I want to be sure that we understand the simple gospel tonight, or this, this morning. The simple truth is, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And... Hear what Paul says here. He's telling Timothy. And he says, chapter 1 and verse 15, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now what did Jesus come to? Save sinners. Of whom I am chief. Let's don't stumble. Jesus came to save sinners. So when you and I, Christians, encounter a sinner and there's a spirit that's willing to condemn them, it's an antichrist spirit. Jesus came for them. He didn't... What, you know, everybody, can anybody here quote John 3.16? Can you? Isn't that wonderful? They call it the most beloved verse. You know, very few can quote John 3.17. God sent not His Son to condemn the world. So when Christians do a condemnation thing, it's not the Spirit of Jesus. It's very simple. Very simple. This Gospel is simple. Jesus came to save sinners. And He came not to condemn the world. Now, I asked this one time on Facebook. I just talked back. You know, Facebook has been changed. Y'all realize that, don't you? It used to be if you posted something, everybody on, in your friend list got the post. Now they don't do it. They dole it out over time. And so, you know, they had to, after a while, water it down for the investors. But So Facebook's not what it was, Zuckerberg. And, uh, but nevertheless, 
Before they changed it, when you posted something, everybody got it. I asked a question on Facebook. Jesus came for a twofold reason. What was the twofold reason God sent his son into the earth? And man, people started hitting that thing. People must just live on Facebook. You wonder if they work anymore. I mean, they just started boom, 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 bleep, bleep, bleep. My, my computer just started sounding like a pinball machine. Bleep, 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 bleep. People were just were commenting, commenting, commenting. I just watched it. Lance and I were saying, watch, look at this. Click, 35 people. Click, 70 people. We refreshed. 110 people. I thought, my goodness. What, do y'all not do any? I, I, well, I'm on Facebook too, so click. Uh, 230 people, we kept click. It finally got up to 400 people. They were all responding. Everybody had basically the same answers in a different way, but nobody got the scripture I was looking for. It's in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. Let's keep this simple. There is a simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. I want you to know why God sent his son. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Jesus came for two reasons. God sent him on an assignment. Son, I need you to do something for me. It's twofold in nature. I want you, all of my creation is in the flesh. And now Adam has fallen and all of his descendants are in a fallen state. This cannot be reversed. I can't, re I can't turn them back. But if you'll go and partake flesh like them, and I know you'll live sinless. I know you will. And fulfill the entire law that, that has to be fulfilled in them. If you'll do the fulfilling of the law and accomplish death having not sinned and go into the lowest earth having never sinned, I will legally be able to raise you from the dead and raise you free from the sins and the sicknesses and the diseases that the people will encounter on their own and deliver them who through fear of that death all their lifetime will be subject to bondage. He said, I'll do so. He went in. Now, we sing the song, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You know that song? But in reality, when he was on the cross, his father's assignment was on his mind. He was there to deliver. He was going to be the champion of salvation. Very simple. This gospel is so simple, we've had to have help to misunderstand it. So let's do away with the misunderstandings and know just a couple of simple things. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I like the three things that Riley Stevenson showed us when he was here during the REACH event. Let's look at those again. If you're wondering what is it going to take to get people saved, it's very simple. Look at Romans chapter 3. Romans, the third chapter. Now, I know you've heard salvation messages all your life, and, but listen, just because you've heard them all your life doesn't mean I'm not supposed to preach them. I do have an assignment in the earth, and I know exactly what it is. Isn't that cool? I, I get to think about people that live their whole life and don't know what their assignment on the earth is. Well, I believe that's changing for you, sister. I see your assignment pretty clear. Carla's called to a very unique section of the body of Christ that could never hear from God unless she said it. My calling in the earth is to present this gospel in a very simple way. Take the articles of the covenant, walk in victory in the earth walk, and then teach you how to do the same. Very simple. Very simple. It's hard for people that can't walk in victory to teach those who how to walk in victory. See, you know what I'm saying? It's unless I have that experience, and it's not because I'm so smart. It's just there's a grace that's on me. How many of y'all can testify that there's a grace that's on your pastor? Yes. I mean, a, a noticeable grace. Every morning that I deal, every morning when I wake up, I, I almost, without fail, I'll tell Janie, well, there's new mercy this morning. Great is His faithfulness. His compassions fail not. 
We got brand new mercy this morning. Have you ever wore his mercy out in a day? Well, you felt like it when you went to bed. Well, we about want to be waiting for the morning light because we wore his mercy out today, didn't we? Well, his mercy and compassion be brand new tomorrow morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, the earth spins at 1,000 miles an hour. It does. And it hurls through space at about 70,000 miles an hour. And as it's spinning, God is basking, basting it in his mercy. With the, morning, with the coming up of the sun, he's bathing it with new mercy every morning. <laughs> you can't fail when you understand that. My calling is to walk in victory in the earth walk according to the covenant of the New Testament and teach others how to live like that. It's my calling. Very simple. He'll always, he'll never pull, he may add something to it, but he'll never pull that calling from my life. So, with that in mind, Romans chapter 3. Look at verse 23. What are the first four words? For all have sinned. Do you mean to tell me that people that do real ugly things are not worse sinners than I was? That's what I mean to tell you. All people have sinned. I don't care if you were raised in church and you've never done a wrong thing. You were born in sin. All have sinned is what the scripture says. Now, with that said, look at chapter 6 and verse 23. All have sinned. Say it. All have sinned. That means me. Verse 23 of chapter 6 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if all have sinned and the wages of sin is death, guess what's going to happen to all that have sinned? Death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now turn to Romans chapter 10. If that's a free gift, then how do I get it? I like verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now get this in your spirit. Once and for all. Keep this all your life and don't let it get any more complicated than this because the simple truth is all have sinned. Say it. All have sinned. Romans 3 says all have sinned. Romans 6 says but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 10 says and whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So when you see someone, I like how Riley did that. Very, very simple. That boy's gotten 5,000 people saved since he was here. He'll just go up. He, I've seen, you know, he's so sweet. He's just the sweetest thing. Just so, just old country boy. Texan. And he'll go to talking to people. And he'll just say, look, I'm not going to say that this, that this is going to happen. But if you were to die tonight, do you know where you're going to go? And they'll say, no. He says, well, the Bible says in Romans 3 that all have sinned. And Romans 6 says, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Romans chapter 10 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to come in your heart. He'll do it. And they'll, they'll pray every time. And some, I've sat and watched him do that over and over and over. And I've seen people cry. You get them saved that fast, just so fast. Say this. Romans 3 says, all have sinned. Romans 6 says, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Romans 10 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord be saved. So let's call on the name of the Lord together. So, Lord Jesus, come in my heart. I receive your salvation. Free and clear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom. See, that's very simple. Say it. The simple truth is. We make it hard. Well, you have to, don't you have to admit that you're a sinner? Honey, I'd be that if I admitted it or if I didn't. I don't, don't you have to acknowledge the fact that you're a fallen person? No. Don't you have to receive the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost? I don't need all that. There's a lot of stuff you're going to get that you don't know. See, this is not just a physical or a verbal contract. What happens when you receive Jesus in your heart is your, your nature changes. 
There is a new nature that lodges in you. The old man dies and the new man is born again that moment at the confession of the Lord Jesus. That's the part God does. He's installed it in the earth. All you did was learn that all have sinned. Everybody's sinned. And then you learn that, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then you learn that whoever calls on the name of the Lord cashes the check. Everybody, whoever calls on the name of the Lord is saved. It's that simple. And don't make it any more complicated. It's not any more complicated. Say it, the simple truth. Okay. Now, <laughs> I like to use these verses right here for people. In 1 John, and we'll close up right here. I dare say that if people would go to church and learn a little something like this, a little simple thing, and then tell the whole family, the whole family gets saved. Did you know that, have you ever noticed how that when the Holy Ghost shows up in one person in the family, he'll spread across the whole family, a household salvation will visit an entire family? Happened with mine, like just like that. There was a, like a revival that took place in my family in the late 70s. Everybody just started talking about the Lord again because Johnny did. I didn't, know, I didn't know I was about to incite a spiritual riot. But you remember Butch started talking, then Grady got to talking, and of course they wanted to talk about what, Grady wanted to talk about what he used to have until he found out that what he used to have had gone so stale he didn't know that he had it anymore and learned again that he did have it again. And then Wanda and then Vicky and, um, and then Butch, and I think Pat was born saved. Weren't you, weren't you born saved? You know, that's right. yeah, yeah. And, uh, but no, seriously, Pat just came back to the God of her childhood is all it was. Very simple. I like, I like hitting the reset button on my salvation from time to time. What's wrong with that? Just hit the reset button. We were in a meeting down here when Lance was a baby. An evangelist was here teaching. Remember the evangelist Billy Mayo? Fabulous. Call to the youth of America and can get them. He's got an anointing and got a net. We went to one of his meetings. And on about Thursday night of the meeting, Lance is sitting up in his mama's lap and we're driving to church. And he said to his mom, how many times did I get saved now? Three. <laughs> he did just like that. And she said, yep, yeah, Lance, you got saved. You going to get saved again tonight? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I don't mind getting saved over and over again. Do you? Come to Jesus. Come to that altar every time. Just keep coming to that altar. I don't care. I don't care. Well, now, you shouldn't let them do it more than once. See, there you're starting to complicate it. Don't complicate it for a child. Boy, we want to complicate the communion table. Oh, no, you got to make sure that your children don't take communion if they're not ready. Honey, let, give them the bread and the wine and hush. They want to eat and drink too. Yeah. Let them eat and drink. One day they'll learn what it's about, but right now we want them familiar with it. Yeah. I was, I went, my first spirit-filled experience in a church was about you know the restrictions and my God, there were more restrictions than there were liberties, as if that was the gospel. Yes, you remember. My God. I learned that in Christ Jesus there's great liberty and great, great simplicity. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 15, whosoever is the first word, underline whosoever. Now, who does that include? And who does that exclude? It excludes no one. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwells in Him and He in God. Did you know that to get the new birth, the Spirit of the living God to lodge in your spirit, that comes at the immediate confession of Jesus is the Son of God. You got the word for it right there. What's the name of this church? What did it say out there on the sign when you pulled up? Church on the Word. Now look at John 5 and verse 1. Whosoever, uh-oh, who's he talking about? Same big old crowd of folk, right? Does that include everybody? Does that ex exclude anyone? Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loves Him that begat, loves Him also that is begotten of Him. Well, as soon as you make Jesus Lord of your life, as soon as you confess or believe that Jesus is the Christ, you're born of God. Ah, I love it. Now, look at uh, chapter 5 and verse 12. Lest we get into thinking 
that all rivers lead to the same ocean and all belief systems lead to the same God. And we get hung up in that universalist saying that this is, Pastor, isn't that more simple than the gospel? No. It's not more simple to say that Islam is the way to salvation and Buddha is the way to salvation. And name a God. Name those gods they talk about. He, the Indians in the nation of India, they have hundreds of gods. And they all don't lead to the same place. Look at the 12th verse of chapter 5 of First John. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. Quote that verse. Put that verse in. And y'all quote it. Let me hear y'all quote that out loud. He that has not the Son has life. And he that has not the Son has not life. Plain as a nose on your face. Jesus is the way to salvation. Because He's the one that came, lived perfectly, fulfilled the Abrahamic covenant, fulfilled the law of Moses, walked in every ordinance perfect, lived sinless, died on the cross with your sins on His body and in His spirit, and your sicknesses on His body and in His spirit, and then He went into the lowest hell for three days and three nights and paid the eternal price for it and satisfied the claims of eternal justice. And then God was able to legally raise him from the dead. The plan of redemption is a fabulous love story. One died for all that all may live. Very simple. Don't make it hard. Say this. Everybody sinned. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord be saved. Jesus, come in my heart. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells in God. So I confess that Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> well, now, what if they do all this confession thing you're talking about, Pastor, and then go off and live in the same sin that they were in before they came in here? They probably will. Well, I mean, where's the fruit? Fruit don't always show up immediately. Just because you, I sowed some Bermuda seed last week on my grass. That's expensive seed, you know that? Yeah. And it has rained, and I fertilized it. It's rained twice now. And I got out this morning going, looking for a tiny, these little seed, those seeds are so small that, have you ever seen a chigger? <laughs> tiny little red bug. Boy, he gets in, he burrows, you know it. Something that tiny can get in, get in the most unusual places. <laughs> and like my daddy-in-law said, when them boys go to lunch, it don't matter if you singing a solo in church, you're going to dig it right then. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I know it. I saw, I saw the look on your face. Yeah, yes, sir. That same size, that little bug, is the same size as that little Bermuda seed. I thought, this is grass seed? This looks like it any finer and it would be dust. He says, that's why you have to mix it with sand to get it to broadcast. Well, I spread it all over the yard. And I fertilized it. And it's rained a couple of times. We just did it last Thursday. Thursday, I think. Wednesday, Thursday. I got out this morning looking. Ain't a bit of it come up yet. What do I need? Patience. Oh, I have gone for years sowing this into people. I have preached it till I'm blue in the face. That's my fault. I, he didn't tell me to run out of breath preaching. Just sow the seed. I've had people tell me before. I don't know. I, I, I tell them what the Word says, and, and I don't know if I believe it. And I said, that's okay. I've already sown it in you. It's going to come up. I know this, he that began a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus. And I've got patient. The, the scripture says in the book of James, James chapter 5, I think it is. James chapter 5.
Aren't you glad Jesus is Lord and not some fool? Say, thank God Jesus is Lord. He says here, behold, the husbandman. We're talking about the seed here. The seed of faith is smaller than the seed of Bermuda grass. In fact, you can't hardly see it. Verse 7, chapter 5 and verse 7. <clears throat> Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Be patient. How long do I have to be patient, Pastor? Unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. You got people you know that are still acting ugly and Jesus has been sown in them? And they still act ugly, and Jesus has been sown in them. And they still act ugly, and Jesus has been sown in them. You be patient. Be patient. The seed will come up, and they will change. I've known people living godly, praying for their family, praying for their children, asking God to do it, asking God to do it, and, and just get all caught up in it. And years later... They that did the praying backslid and their kids came, into, came to the Lord. Pray until they repent. And stay repentant yourself. Very simple. Stay with it. And the same God that got them that you were praying for that, that you backed out on is the same one to go back and grab you up again and bring you back to the fold. Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to break it to you like this. Yes, I do. I like to break it to you like this. You can condemn the, the uh, Supreme Court if you want to, and you can condemn all those that the Supreme Court have emancipated. But if you were to pass a law to clamp it down and make it unlawful, it wouldn't stop a thing. What will change is when godly people stand up for their godliness and stand up for the word and walk in love toward all those that are without. There are three types of people, three races of people only that God deals with. Three groups of people. Not the black, white, and the Hispanic. There are three races of people that He deals with. That is the Jew, the Gentile, and the church of God. You're either a Jew or a Gentile or you're born again, which means you're in the church of God. If you're a Jew and born again, you are in the church of God. Well, I'm a born again Jew. You still identifying with Jew? Well, I'm a Gentile and I'm born again. Well, now you're a spiritual Jew. You're one of the two. You're either, you're either born again or you're unborn again. And you either came out a Jew or a Gentile. You're either Jew and got born again or you were Gentile and got born again. But either way, you're either a Jew or a Gentile that does not know God, has nothing about, knows nothing about the covenant, or you're born again. Those three people. Should those that are born again condemn the Jew for not being born again? Then why would we condemn the Gentile for not being born again? Honey, if we're the only light they see then how is your light shining? Say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It won't shine unless you walk in love towards people. If the first thing you want to do is condemn a homosexual for the way he acts, let me tell you something. It will not change him. Now, is your heart really willing to see them change? Or are you just willing to put up a banner saying, I am not homosexual? Is that what really what your motivation is to prove to people which side you're on? What is the motivation of your heart? Keep it simple. Hug them up, love them, tell them Jesus loves you. He does. He loves you. Loves you all his heart. He, listen, 
Don't, don't, be, don't be condemned about all that. Don't let Christians condemn you. You see that bumper sticker one day that says, God, deliver me from your people? <laughs> you ever see that bumper sticker? I saw it the other day and I laughed. I tell people, don't let Christians or anybody else condemn you. Listen, everybody's sinned. Everybody. All have sinned. But you know what? The free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And do you know whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved? Pray with me. Let's call on the name of the Lord. So I've already been saved. Okay. Jesus in your heart? Yeah. If they say that Jesus is in their heart, I'm going to take the confession of their faith. As so whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells in God. So now what about if they just keep on living like that? Eventually, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has what kind of patience? Long, say everybody go, long patience. I've got time to wait for the fruit to show up. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Say it. Won't let Satan get out. I'm going to let it shine. See, it's simple, isn't it? Won't let Satan get out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Shine all around till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Shine all around till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Now, if I don't want homosexuals or any other sexuals, I don't, you know, why do you want to advertise your sexual? Leave your sexual to yourself. Do some things in private. Lord God. I know some heterosexuals that want to advertise their heterosexual. I don't want to see your sexual. Gross. I don't care what your orientation is. I was born this way. It's my orientation. Your orientation is between you and God. Now, if you engage in sex, it's going to get you diseased. I'm going to tell you to quit. I tell cigarette smokers to quit because it gets you killed. I tell people that if the sexual lifestyle you're living in is going to cause you to live, an average male homosexual in America lives to be 44 years old. If they th have AIDS, it's 39. I'm going to tell people, get out of that lifestyle before it kills you. Quit that. Well, it's my orientation. That's between you and God. It's your sex act that is a lifestyle choice. The act is the choice. The orientation, how you got your wiring fried is between you and God. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Am I keeping it simple for you? Shine all around till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Going to stay patient till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. He's, while He's working in them to will and to do of His good pleasure, He's also working in me and you to will and to do of His good pleasure. Did you know that I don't live perfectly right all the time? Sorry if you'd have to find it out this way right here in the pulpit. <laughs> but the blood of Jesus has to cleanse me too. Just like you. Thank you. Say it again, sister. Every day. I got to get a fresh cleansing of the blood and fresh mercy. There's always. I mean, I can go some days. I can go some days and not sin, as far as I know. At least I hadn't done anything that Janie's gotten on me about. I have learned that if she gets on me, I sinned. I guarantee you that. <laughs> yes, sir. It's hard to sin when you got somebody right there cracking the whip on you all the time, keeping you straight. That's why God, in, God gives wives to husbands. She's the voice of my conscience. Is she watching by live stream? Oh, I think I feel, I see Billy and Diane and Jamie. We want to thank you for joining us today for the Word Blast Christian broadcast. Remember, God sent us His written word to get our thinking straightened out. When his mindset becomes our own, peace settles in. Our confession and belief system gets straightened out. That's when our life gets straightened out. That's because we've become word wise. God bless you. See you next week.